I'm Katie Lewis. I'm a PhD student at MIT, and today I'm going to be talking about our virtual try-on method, try-on can. I worked on this as an intern at Google Research with my two co-authors, Shirvatsen and Ira. In the 2D virtual try-on task, we have an image of a person and an image containing a garment of interest, such as a shirt. And we want to synthesize the person in the new garment. So you can see we have the person on the left, and she's going to try on the blue shirt from the right image. Now this has many challenges. We have to transfer the shirt across different body types and different body poses. We have to make sure that we keep her identity the same, as well as her other garments. And we also have to learn to synthesize skin when going from a longer sleeve shirt to a shorter sleeve shirt. And in particular, we wanted to focus on photorealism and high resolution images. So here's a result from our method. You can see we're able to preserve the identity, such as the face, hair, and skin tone. We're able to transfer the color and the shape of the shirt. We're able to synthesize realistic looking folds, as well as skin on the arms that's consistent with her identity. So now I'll talk about how we do this. We wanted to build our method off of StyleGAN 2, since we wanted to focus on photorealism. But we had to make a couple of architecture changes. The first is replacing the constant input to the generator with the pose conditioning input. This will enable us to have explicit control over the pose of the person. It also allows us to disentangle pose and style so that we can change the style of the shirt without changing the pose of the person. We can take a closer look at the pose encoder. It takes a 64 by 64 pose heat map, which is formed from pose key points and it down samples using convolutions. We output at multiple resolutions, and these are input with input to the corresponding style blocks. We use a separate discriminator to train this, and it takes in pose heat map and image pairs. The second change we make is outputting segmentations at each resolution. This will enable us to use the segmentations as a mask and the optimization that I'll talk about. So for example, we can separate the garment from the identity. Here are some examples of the same style and different poses using our pose conditioning. We can also generate different styles in the same pose. And this works for many different poses as well as many different shirt types. I'll also show some RGB and segmentation outputs from our network. Our network is able to segment a variety of poses as well as different shirt types. So once we have our pre-trained network, we can freeze the weights and build an optimization on top of it for try-on. This optimization will take in latent representations of the person and the garment and output try-on image. The latent representations will look a little different than the previous network. Instead of having one latent vector for all the style blocks, we'll have one latent vector for each style block. And this has been shown in previous works to work better when projecting real images into the latent space. A key part of our optimization are having these interpolation blocks at each resolution. We interpolate between the style representation of the person and the style representation of the garment image. And when done that correctly, this means that we can transfer the representation of the garment that we're interested in to the person representation. We learn these interpolation coefficients through an optimization, and this optimization has three loss functions. The first loss is the localization loss, and this ensures that we're only changing the representation in the region of interest. So for example, we want to change the shirt style, but not the hairstyle. This loss takes in two inputs. The first are the interpolation coefficients, which we denote Q. And the second is this value M, which measures the spatial overlap between activation tensors in the network and semantic regions, uh, which we get from segmentations. And we, we measure this loss by seeing whether we're interpolating within semantic regions that we want to change. The second loss is a garment loss where we want to make sure that we transfer the details and shape of the garment. This takes in two inputs. The first is formed by taking the segmentation output from our network and masking the garment from the output try-on image. 
and the second input is the masked garment from the original garment image. We take a weighted difference between VGG features as the loss. The last loss is the identity loss, and this will ensure that we preserve the identity of the person. Here we use hair and face as a proxy for identity. Again, it takes in two inputs. The first masks out the identity of the try-on person, and the second is a masked out identity from the original person image. We again take the weighted difference between VGG features. So now I'll show some results first on generated and then on real images. Here we have a try-on pair. We have the person on the left, and she's going to try on the red garment from the right image. You can see this will require changing the neckline, the texture and length of the sleeves, as well as the color and the hemline. And we're able to do just that. We're able to preserve the identity of the person as well as her skirt. We're able to synthesize skin when changing the neckline, and we're able to capture the texture of the garment. Here we show that we're again we're able to synthesize skin on the arms when going from a longer sleeve to a shorter sleeve shirt. Again, we're able to preserve her pose, pants, identity, as well as capture the texture, color, and shape of the shirt. And lastly, we show that we're able to transfer patterns as well. So here you can see again we go from a longer sleeve to a shorter sleeve shirt. We're able to capture the pattern without changing the identity of the person. So our focus was on shirt try-on, but we can easily change the garment that we transfer just by changing the label that we give the optimization. So we don't have to retrain. Here we want to transfer the genes from the right to the left person. And we show we're able to synthesize pockets, zippers, buttons, even though they didn't exist in the person image all without changing the shirt or the identity of the person. I'll show results on real images as well. This will require an extra step where we first have to project the real images into the latent space to get a latent representation for both the person and the garment images. Here again, the left person will be trying on the red shirt from the right image. You can see we're able to change the neckline, synthesize skin on the arms and neck consistent with identity, we're able to capture the shape and color of the shirt while maintaining her hairstyle and jeans. However, you can see a couple of details are lost in projection. We leave better projection for future work. However, we show we still outperform current state-of-the-art try-on methods on real images with projection as is. Here I show a few more examples of try-on on real images. Again, you can see we're able to change the sleeve length, capture the color and shape of the shirt, all, without, all while preserving the identity of the person. I'll now show qualitative comparisons with state-of-the-art methods. I show two examples, one in each row, where we have the person in the first column and the garment in the second column. Here we show results from current state-of-the-art methods. You can see they do a reasonable job, however there are still many blurring effects and artifacts. Our results, in comparison, are much higher resolution, we have fewer artifacts, we're able to capture the sleeve length correctly, as well as the color of the garment, and we're able to preserve identity features such as skin tone and hair. We also show that we outperform in qual quantitative metrics, as well as the user study. I'll end with two GIFs. The first shows results from our method of the same person trying on different shirts. You can see she's able to try on a variety of shirts without changing her, her identity or her jeans. And the second shows different people trying on the same shirt. Below is the link for our website for more details. Thank you.